Okay, so today I'm gonna in be installing these so I can get the uh, new lithiums all set up. I don't actually have the fuses for this. I didn't realize I had to order those separate. So it won't be fully hooked up, but I can at least run all the cables there and kind of get it in place and then I'll order those fuses and get her going. But before that, I need to move that stupid hose right there. I don't know why they chose to splice it right there. But basically, I'm just going to couple it right there and then move that T over to this section right here and run an actual half inch hose from there instead of a three quarter with a couple hose clamps to try and make it down to a half inch. That hose just runs over to here and then just for cockpit water up there. And it's kind of kind of weird little setup there, but... I figure it's it was designed that way I'm not sure what we'll use cockpit water for like that you know we'll probably if we're gonna rinse off we're gonna rinse off in the back um, at the stern little outlet there instead but might as well keep it in place so just an extra little hose simple connection hopefully we'll see um, and I'll show you the end all right I am officially losing it right now I pulled this off you can see here it says three quarter. Maybe you guys can't see that very well. It says three quarter ID braided PVC. I have one bought from West Marine that I had to buy the threaded to threaded half inch one to make a little reducing coupling there. And I also bought one from Amazon because it's super hard to find these at the hardware store. So both of these rated for three quarters. This says three quarters. This does not <laughs> seal whatsoever. What am I missing here? This is ridiculous. Oh, why is three quarter different in every store? I don't know what it is. Please, if there's anyone out there who knows, please fill me in. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So after all that sizing difficulties I found out that that hose is three-quarter gray I had a three-quarter to half inch gray coupling but the half inch gray is actually five-eighths hose so then I had the five-eighths hose and then I did have a five-eighths to half inch white coupling going to half inch hose going to that T over there which is half inch pecs and then uh, <laughs> yeah. running along the half inch copper so we got a fun plumbing situation on this boat yeah having a great time can't wait to get to the electrical something standardized another little sidetracked project here we are going to make a little permanent place for this little cup because I need it for uh, changing the diesel filters and potentially just for draining the water into and all that. Just good to have a dedicated cup for that. So I found these a while ago. We had this for the galley. It didn't really fit any of our cups. It's pretty big, but it fits these cups perfect. So I'm gonna cut this little edge off and then screw that into the wall here and we'll have a permanent little spot for that. And that's about as good as that plumbing section's gonna get, at least on this round until I decide to repipe the whole uh, boat, but looks pretty good. Wanted to keep that away from that, so I zip tied it to that tube. That Those uh, stainless steel hose clamps against the copper pipe, I believe, will start to corrode the copper pipe. I know for electrical work, we also always have to keep our MC away from any copper pipe for corrosion purposes. So I think we're all clear, all zip tied up and strapped and yep, looking good, ready to install the electrical. So we almost got this all cleaned up, ready to put it back, but we got this little 12 volt kind of cigarette lighter charger there. Wanted to hook that up, but it had a nut that's missing here so what i'm going to do is put one of these little quick connects on it and then solder that to it so that i can uh, disconnect all the wires and kind of move this freely too so kind of should work out even better than having the nut there i'll connect that up and get this all tidied up and make malvina happy 
So I want to secure this down to the back here. If anyone's ever had any trouble trying to mark out these holes, the trick that I learned a while ago, put a piece of paper over the holes and then you can either take a pencil or just use your finger and kind of press down. I was able to just use my finger and now I have an outline of the holes. You can see there. And I can put that up against the wall here and then I'll just drill I'll just drill through the holes right here, put the screws down, rip the paper away, and then this will slide on perfect. All right, so I'm about ready to uh, wire up this whole battery system here. And as some of you may remember, we do have this one down here and then three up here. So unfortunately that makes a little bit more resistance down to this one if we were to go with the same wire size and someone mentioned and i've read before that you know battery banks do want to be similar resistance or exact same resistance for everything for each battery so that one doesn't get drained faster than the other so what i did is i got all my wire here and instead of doing the same length because that would leave a big coil in there I did a little bit of a calculation and I pulled this resistance chart from the West Marine Anchor website, Anchor Wire. Got all the resistance measurements here. And so I pulled, I needed 45 and a half inches for, for the uh, long run. And then I, I calculated the ohms per inch. They give you ohms per thousand feet because ohms per inch is a pretty pretty low number. So then I got my total ohms required to match that 45 and a half inches at four aught. And then from there, I was able to kind of get the measurements to match the same resistance on all the other gauges. And it worked out that I'm gonna use one aught for the second furthest one. I'm gonna use number one for the third for this one and then uh, number two for the closest one and number two is rated for over 200 amps still and those are 200 amp BMS's on those batteries we should be good and not have a bunch of like kind of weird coiled wires in there that's my solution for that and uh, we'll see how it goes check the batteries in a year or two I got this handy little Knipex that is the proper way of saying it it sounds wrong like knife this is a little ratcheting cable cutter so you can just ratchet it I think it goes up to uh, 500 MCM something like that and it just ratchets and cuts through these cables super clean so I got them all measured out already and just cutting down the line and it is a little bit difficult to keep it straight but that shouldn't really matter once it gets into the lug again we've already been so freaking precise on this thing that it's not lost in the minute details there but yep all good all cut to length now we'll just get to stripping those back and crimping those lugs on there and hook it up yeah. all right connor back in his hole he made this nice little lovely wooden bed mm -hmm. And a cushion back here. I'll get you a pillow, babe. <laughs> I'll get you even a blankie. I don't really want to lean against this stuff, but... You're right, know, but for real, what are you bad. doing? Uh, right now, yeah, you can look <laughs> under my legs. <laughs> um, so it's a little cramped back here, so I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. And this uh, 4 rock cable had to come past the batteries, too, so this is scooched all the way over. Ended up working really well. If, the batteries were over a little bit further it would have been really tough to get that cable in there but yeah I just crimped all these lugs on here and they're super tight got a good hydraulic crimper did the heat shrink on them all now I'm just hooking them up so this one's gonna go to the far battery that'll be negative positive and then this one will go to the closest one second furthest second furthest and then our little Lynx distributor with the fuses will come after this. These things are super cool because it does just hook up. It's not that easy to get off, but that's probably good anyways. Oh, I was just pulling the wrong part. So that'll just hook up 
to the next box here that'll have all the fuses and then that will connect to the charge controller and the AC DC charger here and inverter and all that fun stuff so coming along good job babe thanks I'll be back with pillows and blankies <laughs> <laughs> I snapped the, the stud off of here there it is. I could have swore I was just doing the same kind of torque. Just kind of, you know, good torque. Probably 40, 50 pounds of torque on there. And for whatever reason, this one snapped off. It just kept turning until it went. So there is this extra ground terminal Where? down here. Right down here on the negative bus bar. It's called a ground on, on the diagram. Don't mistake that for a ground like to your AC system. That's a ground like in your car, a ground like that you would ground to the engine so that your whole engine is negatively charged basically. So I don't think I'm really gonna be using that. Anything that's gonna be getting power from this is gonna be getting its negative supply from our, the next panel that's going in there. So I'm going to pull that off of there, hopefully that fits in there and we can be all good. But yeah, this is a kind of special stud too, it's not just regular steel, it's kind of copper with, with some sort of, I don't know, tin coating on the end of it, so I probably cranked that a little bit too hard for copper. Oopsies. Oopsies, torque wrench I should have used. <laughs> Talk to me. All right. Well, yeah, like I said, that did work. I, I pulled the bolt out of that uh, bottom bus bar there, the negative bus bar. That that grounding bus should be not necessary. If it is necessary, I can tie it to a ground off, off of the next one here. But yeah, looking pretty good. I haven't connected up any of the batteries yet. I want to get the dead side connected first, like always in electrical work. Don't do the hot side first. Do the load side first, and then and then you can connect the the lines from the battery. So we'll get those connected. I don't have the fuses to connect the whole system yet. We have to get the max fuses, which are not carried at West Marine, but I did that order them through. Them. Yeah, but I figured that should actually equalize the batteries too before we start using them. If we tie them all together, then it'll equalize. So they're all starting at the same voltage too. So I think that'll be a good thing. Not sure if that's a thing you're supposed to do, but it sounds like a good idea to me. Hunter, <laughs> <laughs> well, you made a really big mess today. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, not that bad. About par for the course. Just Look at open. all the stuff over on the curb. <laughs> and then it's electrical keep going. work, that's how it goes. Look Don't at the, our couch. <laughs> I can't even get to my laptop without. Yeah, you can. You can. Jars falling on me. Here, <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> so, I was just about to hook up all this stuff to the batteries, and then I thought about it, and there's no separation to it. So, just wanted to point that out. If you are doing one of these, I, didn't, I luckily didn't do it, but if you got loose wires down here let's say, or any loose wires around, if you were to short any of them with one of the batteries connected, you, you know, you'll short that battery. Good to tape them off first. That's why I got out of my cubby hole. I had to find some electrical tape. So I'm doing a little stretching now, doing a little yogurt. <laughs> I'll get back in there soon. 